Okay, welcome back to uh, Real Analysis. Today we're actually going to start talking about functions. What is a function? What does it mean for a function to have a limit? And what does it mean for a function to be continuous? So that's our plan for today. Let's, um, let's start off by just saying a little bit about uh, functions. So we're going to imagine throughout this lecture that we have two metric spaces. Let x and y be metric spaces. Okay, so each of them has some metric, some notion of distance on them. You might think of x as here and y as here. Okay, and uh, a function is going to be an assignment. We know we've defined this from the very beginning of class. An assignment of a, uh, a point in x to a point in y in such a way that, OK, if I plug in, if I plug in a point x here, uh, it always spits out the same answer. OK? And you can think of that as taking points over here to points over here, right? Maybe it takes this point over here to this point over here, this point here, et cetera. Okay, it might map a whole, a whole line of things uh, over here as well. Okay, so this is a function. Okay, now um, there are of course many ways uh, to think of functions. You could also think of a function as uh, this is maybe m maybe the mathematical way of thinking about a function where you separate the domain and the codomain, but you've also from single variable calculus or uh, throughout your uh, education, you've thought about functions as graphs, right? So this is thinking about a function as a mapping. So this is visualize f as a mapping. But you could also think about f as a graph, right? So as a graph, of course, you'd have, you try to put these things on the same diagram, and you put x here, and you put y here, OK? Uh, of course, the way I've drawn this, this is something two-dimensional, and this is something two-dimensional. So uh, down here, you'd have two dimensions, and up here, you'd have two dimensions, right? And you see quickly that the graph is going to be a little harder to do when the dimensions get much bigger than three, because the graph of a function from two dimensions to two dimensions is going to be four-dimensional. This is why often this is a better picture to think about than <coughs> this, okay? But I mean, you, you can't stop me from trying, right? I mean, I could try to draw the graph. It would just be four-dimensional, OK? Um, you could imagine, well, I'm not going to try to draw it. <laughs> OK, great. So um, in fact, I'll just leave that here, and I'll start here. So what does it mean to uh, talk about the limit of a function? That's the question we want to grapple with. We've already talked about what it means to take limits of sequences. So um, we know um, uh, what, it, what this means. If I say the limit of uh, xn is x as n goes to infinity, we've already said what this means, right? For every epsilon, there is a n, an integer n. For every epsilon bigger than 0, there's an n such that for all little n bigger than big N, these two things are closer than epsilon, right? That's the idea, OK? OK, but what I want to grapple with is the following question. Can I t does it make any sense whatsoever Does it make any sense whatsoever to talk about the limit of a function as x goes to not some integer, uh, not s uh, in infinity, but as uh, x approaches some, let's say, p? Does it make any sense to say limit of f of x is q? What does this mean? That's the question. Can we make sense of this? Okay. Okay. So uh, let's just look at some examples here. 
right? So for instance, I might think about the following uh, function. Well, let's see. Here's a function. Here is x and uh, here is uh, y. And maybe um, I look at some points down here, like these points. And I look at where they go. So I'm, I'm, I'm drawing the graph of a particular function. It might look something like this. Okay. I've just shown you four points in this domain, and they go to some four points in the range, and I've just graphed them here. Okay. There is at least part of a function, right? I haven't maybe defined the whole function, but does it make any sense to say, okay, I've got a bunch of points here. These, these are little points like little x's. Does it make any sense to say as x goes to some p, uh, f of x goes to some q? I mean, how can I make sense of this? Of course, here, of course, I only have four points, but you could imagine maybe I have a whole interval of points, uh, have a whole range of points here, and I tell you where they go, right? So maybe this, this picture looks something like this. If I showed you all the points, right? And then you could begin to ask, oh, if a bunch of points down here converge to P, uh, what does that mean? Can I say that other points converge, that their images converge to Q? That's kind of the question I'm asking, OK? OK, um, let's see. Let's think about another example. Maybe I have a picture that looks something like this, where I have a bunch of, um, hmm, OK, and maybe my point here is P. And I look at a bunch of points here. Here's a bunch of x's going to P. And now the question is, can I talk about limits of the f of x's? Are, are these points doing something? There's the question. How do I make sense of this? Now, what I want you to notice is that, in fact, the f this statement, limit of a, of a sequence, it's actually a sequence, after all, is a function, isn't it? How is a sequence a function? It takes in a index and spits out a number. So that's, in fact, a function that looks like this. It's a function defined only on the integer points. And maybe, you know, if it was converging to some kind of limit, then what, really what we're saying is these points, as you go farther and farther out, sort of approach a limiting value, right? With me? OK. But so what's different about this is that we're, we're not, we're, we're actually looking at, we're allowing ourselves to look at points that don't go off to infinity, but maybe get closer and closer to p. And we're asking ourselves something about what f of x is doing. Yes? Good? OK, great. So um, this should motivate uh, our, our notion or our definition of, a, uh, of limits. OK. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can make a, a, a precise definition here. So um, suppose I have, 